What's the name of your business? Senior Adult Travel. So, if you guys want to see some really cool places, hook up with Dr. Nash today. Y'all may be seated. It's good to be with you today. Appreciate the opportunity. I pray for your pastor and his wife and the family. They're all on vacation. I understand they're all on vacation having a great time. So, uh, maybe not such, such a quiet vacation, but anyway, good that you are here today. Um, come to share God's word with you, and uh, some of you have heard the old saying that it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you are sincere. You won't find that in the Bible, but people still believe that. We live in a pluralistic society, and people who have embraced this idea that you can believe anything that you want to, everything is okay, and everybody's going to end up in heaven one day. Well, the Bible does not teach us that, and so we want to look today at a, a passage of Scripture because we are all, somewhere in the back of our mind, understand the concept of the Antichrist. The Antichrist. One day, at the end of time, before the end of time, the Antichrist is going to come. But it's interesting that in 1 John, the Bible tells us, as we look there this morning, chapter 2, beginning in verse 18, that's where we want to spend our time. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, and by which we know that it is the last hour. The last hour. The Antichrist has already come, already among us. What does that mean? Because in a world that in embraces sincerity, in a world that embraces everyone's theology, lifestyle, culture, whatever you want to call it, we understand that the world says, as long as you're serious, as long as you're sincere, that's okay, everything's going to be fine, and we all get along, we all end up in heaven. Sincerity is not the magic ingredient that makes something true. For example, in the hospital, the nurse may sincerely think she's given a patient the right medicine, and you know as well as I do, on occasion, thankfully not often, a patient gets a medication that either will or almost kill them, even though the nurse is sincerely believing that she's doing the right thing, giving the right medicine. It, it, but sincerity is not that magic ingredient. Some of you have heard stories about uh, men who wake up in the middle of the night and hear noises, strange noises, either outside or downstairs. One father did that, and he sincerely believed there was a burglar in, it, in his house, and his daughter was just downstairs fixing a midnight snack, and she became a victim of the father's sincerity, believing something to be true that is not. And so when we look at the Antichrist this morning, we're not looking at something way out there that's going to give us an answer for the end times, but something that's more present. I believe what John is saying is in the last hour, in the last days, and folks, you know as well as I do that we are in the last hour, in the last days. It's not so much the end of time, but it is our time. We find ourselves in life sometime at the last hour. It appears that we, as they used to say, just tie a knot and hang on. The end is here. We don't know what we're going to do. And congregations do that. People do that. And in a world where everything seems to be overwhelming, we come to the end of our rope. We come to that desperate time of the last hour. And what John wants us to understand as we look at this scripture, we understand because of the Antichrist, because of the false teachings, because of the confusion, we sometimes get so confused we don't know what right is. Our world does not know right from wrong. And it looks dark. It looks like the last hour. It looks like the end. And in John's day, there were imposters in the church. They brought in false teachings and all kinds of things were going on. And the deceptions and the desperations of those times, of those hours, is why John is writing to remind them. It's a time we find ourselves. Not a time on the calendar, not necessarily a duration of time, but a time of crisis, a time that is critical. So what does he have to say to us? The Antichrist is here. He has come. And there are many. I remember, and you, you 
probably won't be offended by us by me saying this. We had all kinds of people who thought people come along, the Pope's the Antichrist, Bill Clinton's the Antichrist, Obama's the Antichrist, and all kinds of things. When you look at that perspective of the end time, who is going to be the Antichrist? John says they're already here. So what does he tell us about those that are already here? They're not just on the way. Understand what anti means. It's a Greek prefix that means against. We know what antifreeze is. That's to keep your car from freezing. So anti means against, or it could mean instead of, or another point of view. So we have instead of, or the opposite. You have a thesis, and what's the opposite of the thesis? The anti of the thesis is the antithesis. So you have two sides. And so when John tells us about the Antichrist, it is those people who are coming in this world who are against Christ, against the church, and oftentimes even within the church offering something instead of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So instead of is what we're looking at. These meanings will help us as we look at these next few verses because John is calling our attention to the Antichrist. Because in that day, Christians could not tell the difference between some real Christians and the imposters. And what John is, is writing to give us some clarity and some understanding about how do we understand the difference between a true Christian and the Antichrist. And he gives us four tests. And the first test that we find here is in verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. What's the first test in verse 19? He says perseverance. What's the test of the Antichrist? Perseverance. Those who have been tried by the fire, those who are still here. And he reminds us that there are those who have gone out from the fellowship. Do you know that the, the founders of all of the major cults have gone out from us? Uh, there are people who are out in our world today who used to be Christian. Uh, Joseph Smith, founder of the Mormons, he, he, just, he, he writes, he tells us all that, well, I visited all of these churches and found out that uh, none of them were right, so God told me that uh, I was going to start my own religion, and he did. And so that's how we have, why we have Mormons today. They came out from, as Joseph Smith says, churches that didn't live up to God's expectation nor to his. He was frustrated and dissatisfied with all of them. And what John is saying is, remember that fellowship with God and fellowship with God's people are necessary. And that's the test. They would have continued if they were with us. And they were going out that day and and attacking the church, talking about the church, leading people astray, even back then. And so we find out that um, uh, starting a church, whether you're dissatisfied with where you are, that's not, that's not the real truth of whether or not you're Christian. Another thing that confuses people sometimes is spectacular beginnings is not, is, is not a verification of truth, a true Christian. Uh, some of you, uh, a lot of you in here are old enough to remember James, uh, the, the Jonestown Massacre, Jim Jones, and he, he uh, left the church, took a bunch of people with him down to Guyana and ended up, all of them, drinking the Kool-Aid, literally. And the whole bunch of them died, either massacred or committed suicide, except for one or two, to tell us what really happened there. But he had a great following, a tremendous following, but he was not of the truth. He was not leading them in the way of Christ, even though he had a lot, of a lot of people that followed him. And I want to tell you something else while we're there. As you look at the beginnings, as you look at truth and Christianity, as you look at discerning who the Antichrist is, understand this. It doesn't matter so much what you used to be or what you used to believe if, in fact, If, in fact, you don't believe that anymore, you've gone away from that. It is near. Be 
doesn't count. Where you used to be doesn't count. And John is saying, okay, it's okay to test the spirits. It's okay to give us this test. And they went out from us because they were not of us. Had they been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that, that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. And so faithful perseverance, abiding in him, true and growing in him, daily relationship with the Lord, and learning to be faithful in Christ, knowing Him, abiding in Him. Because if we look at the next thing, He gives us this test of anointing. What does verse 20 say? Well, let's go back, let's go back to verse 24. 24 also talks about that. Therefore, therefore let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. It's talking about faithfulness, abiding, living in the word that you heard from the very beginning. So the first test that we have is that test of perseverance. The second test of identifying the, identifying the Antichrist gives us this in verse 20. But you, they were talking about anointing, the same word I just used. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. It's interesting that a lot of the folks who are against Christ and Christianity or are offering something instead of the truth of the gospel have something to offer instead of and they claim it to be the truth. They were claiming the anointing. They were claiming that they have some special new idea, some new special revelation from God. And folks, what you can be sure of one thing today, one thing that you can be sure of today is when people come around and they have this new anointing, this new enlightenment, this, this new theology, this new truth, this new revelation from God that God spoke to them and gave them a new truth, it's a lie. Why? The Bible says the truth is in the Word of God revealed in Christ has been made manifest to us and so whenever somebody claims they've got something special, something new, some new anointing, whatever it might be, because those false Christians were using those two words that he, he says to, to, they were using those same words to describe their experience. They were so smart. They were so special. They had this special anointing. And so that's what they were using to lead people astray. But he says in verse 20, but you have the anointing of the Holy One. You have the anointing of the Holy One. And you know all things. What all things is he talking about? The revelation of Jesus Christ led by the Holy Spirit of God to give you discernment, to give you wisdom, to give you everything that you need to know to know the truth. I've had people in, in my ministry and over these years will have one lady fall out with me about something that I had said, I had preached. And so she came and sat down and talked to me one day. And so I said, well, let me explain it to you. And I went, you know, this is it, this is it, and, you know, this is what the Bible says. Oh, she said, oh, you mean that? Well, somebody else was saying something else about what you were saying, that what you were saying was not right. She says, now I know. She already knew. She already knew that what I was preaching was out of the Bible. It was the Word of God. She already knew that. But somebody else was trying to give her something else. And you know what happened? The conversation revealed what she already knew. Y'all need to pay attention because there's a lot of foolishness out there. And what John is saying is the Antichrist, the false teachings, the instead of teachings are going to be out there. And if you really are a child of God, you will hear those things and you will know that ain't right. That ain't right. You know better. Because of your experience, your, your own knowledge, the experience that you have, the anointing that you have by the Holy Spirit, you are sealed to the day of redemption and you know you are not your own. Because what he says here in verse, verse 20, you know already, you know all things. You know what he says down in verse 27? Again, he says, but the anointing which you have received from him 
abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. He is talking, uh, what Paul would say in Corinthians is that you have been bought with a price. In Ephesians he says you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. You have been given that truth. You have been assured of your relationship with the Lord. You know who God is and you have experienced the power and the presence of God through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So how do you know, how do you figure out who's the Antichrist? Because you, you, He's talking to the church. If you're here today and you're a Christian, he is saying, but you know better when you hear a lie. You can discern all of the false doctrines and the cults and all of the foolishness that's going on in our world, all of the world religions. You know the truth. Did you know that? That's good to know, isn't it? When the Holy Spirit of God begins to speak to your heart and you begin to, you hear this preacher on TV... And there's a bunch of it on TV. If you're right with God, you'll be able to hear a voice in your own heart saying, that ain't right. Where's Jesus in that? Where's sin in that? Where is salvation in that? They may claim to be a, a preacher of the gospel. They may gather a big crowd. But you who are discerning, you who are anointed will understand. That ain't right tragedy is they bring a lot of that foolishness into our Sunday school classes, into our churches, and then arguing and bickering and all of that, and God's people know that ain't right. That ain't right. And so, how do you identify the Antichrist that is among us? Well, first of all, there's perseverance. The second thing is, there is that anointing. Knowing that you are not your own, you've been bought with a price, and the Holy Spirit of God will seal you to the day of salvation, knowing that you will be able to discern all things. He says you will know all things. You will know right from wrong. It's not an intellectual experience. It's a personal experience. Not that you read about God. You know God in a personal way through your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we, sometimes we uh, misinterpret some things, misapply some things. Sometimes we don't always get it right and we struggle. We have issues because we still are trapped in our humanity. Kind of like the lady one time, she was having a spell in church and she was just excited and she was hyper and she was, you know, worshiping and everything. You know, and, and another man, you know, of course, that was not normal for them. And, and he said, I don't know what she's got, but she sure didn't get it here. <laughs> uh, so we have those kind of things that go on that sometimes are a little bit different, but not untruth and are not something that will challenge your faith. Because the Bible tells us that he has established us in Christ Jesus and has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. We know right from wrong. And so in that presence of the Holy Spirit, we're able to know the truth. Y'all know that argument replaces and is not one of the fruits of the Spirit. Contention and strife. And all of these new ideas, all of these new things, and uh, whether it be whatever you're hung up on, prophecy or the second coming, eschatology, the end time, speaking in tongues, healing miracles, and all of the things sometimes that we get confused about. As a matter of fact, they're all, a lot of things can be a substitute for the real thing. One of the things that's attacking us today, attacking the church and attacking Christianity today is this social gospel, social justice issue. It's threatening the church. It's threatening our denomination. You have people that will substitute the truth of the gospel with social gospel. There are issues out there that are addressed by the gospel who are, who, what, that are addressed by the Lord Jesus Christ and what he says to us about how we are to deal with people. How did the devil... I'll talk about poverty, hunger, and all of those things, and, and some people make that the litmus test, that the, the real test, and if you're a Christian, you're going to be doing all this, 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 and this. Jesus said to Satan, man shall not live by bread alone. All of those issues, he did feed the poor. He did tell us to feed the poor, but he did tell us that first and foremost, man shall not live by bread alone. You've got to get the gospel right and the gospel first and not do all the other social agendas, social issues, 
you know, racism, poverty, literacy, all of those things flow out of a right relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And social warriors that are out there, cultural warriors that are out there, all of those issues are replacing the gospel of Jesus Christ in so many congregations and denominations. And we are not exempt from that. Be careful when somebody offers you something instead of a personal relationship with God through your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He said the first test is that you will persevere. The second test is the anointing. The third test he gives us for identifying the Antichrist is basically comes down to that belief in Jesus. What does he say to us here in these verses? Verse 22. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. In the beginning, God spoke this world into existence. First one of the Bible. If you do not believe verse one of this book, if you don't believe verse 1, and there's a lot of people that don't, I think there's some people in our churches that no longer believe that. But let me just tell you one thing. If you don't believe verse 1 of Genesis chapter 1, you're really going to struggle with verse 22 and 23 of 1 John chapter 2. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. And who, and who acknowledges the Son has the Father. That sounds pretty plain, that, that Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of God. The Trinity. When God said, let us make man in our image, Jesus was there, part of that trinity. He goes all the way back to there. A lot of imposters today will deny the humanity of Jesus. Cults, world religions, oh, Jesus was a good man. He was a prophet. He was a teacher. All of that long list is how you know who's the Antichrist and who isn't based on the Word of God. Who is Jesus is the determining factor. Folks, let me just be plain enough to tell you that however you answer that question and whoever else you believe that offers you something other than the Lord Jesus Christ, what you believe about who Jesus is and how you respond to that determines whether or not you end up in heaven or end up in hell. It's just that plain. And he says, they have come in among us. They are here now. It's not just something that we're waiting for all out there somewhere in the future. And it is a critical hour. It is a critical time because they are here now and they're taking God's people away. And we are embracing all of the false religions of the world. Why? Because people don't know different because they have offered something instead of the truth of God's word. See, our belief doesn't necessarily just rest on our experience and, and what we have somehow uh, had this theological experience. There are people who accept the deity of Jesus, but not his humanity. There are people who accept the humanity of Jesus, but not his deity. In Christ, we have both. Jesus, as people will knock on your door and tell you this today, Jesus came into this world as God. He still is God. But there's some other quirks that go with that. But people will knock on your door and tell you He was God, but God left Him on the cross. He was no longer God on the cross. and deny the deity of Jesus on the cross. I'll tell you the name of them and you know exactly who I'm talking about. Some of you have got them in your family. The deity of the Lord Jesus Christ when he died on the cross for your sins and by your faith in his shed blood as a substitution for your sin and a penalty for your sin is how you make it to heaven. And to deny the deity of Jesus explains away your salvation and your hope of eternity at least an eternity in heaven. You're going to have an eternity where you're going to spend it. And so he says that the, 
The reality of the incarnation of God, the reality of who Jesus is, the fact that he died on the cross for your sins, he was buried and God raised him on the third day, he sits at the right hand of the Father, that's critical. If anybody offers you anything other than that, it's a lie. And you know what John is saying to us? 2,000 years ago, people were saying what people today say. And it is a critical time. It is the last hour. It is a time when people decide between heaven and hell. That's a critical hour. And he says back in, in verse 18, this is a critical hour. We know that it is the last hour for a lot of people. It's serious. It's critical. And so when we look at God who became man, who, who uh, well, there's one one. There's one group that will give you a Bible that uh, is a, a New World Translation that simply says, in the, in the beginning the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. But it, it also says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was little g God, not deity God. He was a God. There's another cult that will, you just call their 800 number, they'll give you a King James Version of the Bible at your door. They will deliver it to you, but they will also not tell you that what they really believe is this other book of their denomination, which is their ultimate authority. They won't tell you that. They will give you the Bible. They'll come in appearing to be just what you're looking for. God became man, dwelt among us. Jesus died for our sins. And you need to know that. Because what he said, look at what he says in verse 24. Therefore let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son of God and in the Father. It's interesting. He's saying you haven't heard anything new. The Bible is still the Bible. The truth is still the truth. And you hear all of this new stuff, and as the old saying is, there's nothing new under the sun. Well, you've got all these new isms and these new religions, and you, all of this stuff is new. John just takes, this is 2,000 years ago. John says, there's nothing new. You already know the truth. Don't settle for the latest ism, the latest religion, the, the, whatever the most recent thought, the most recent, recent denomination, the most recent lie that is being embraced by whatever religion, whatever denomination of Christianity, John says, you know better. You have the truth. Don't be tricked into believing something new because there is nothing new. He says here that, that he abides in you and you will abide in the Son and in the Father. This is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. This is the sure promise that you have eternal life. You need nothing more. So what's the first test of the Antichrist? Simply perseverance. The second one, anointing, being sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. The third test is whether or not they believe in Jesus and who they believe Jesus is. That's interesting. In verse 26, he tells us that um, three th these things I've written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. What's the test of the Antichrist? They try to deceive you. Do you know most of the cults grew, grow through proselytizing, making proselytes of other people who's already in church? There was a time a few years ago that Southern Baptists were losing about 250 Southern Baptists a week to one of the cults because they didn't know any better, apparently. But they will come into churches, and you've had people probably come through here. They come into our churches with this new idea, and they fall away, they go away, they lead some people away. I may have told you this before. We had a congregation not too far from here where we had somebody that started getting a doctrine off of uh, off the satellite, some preacher, and he kept. He started in a Sunday school class, then it started to Sun uh, to Wednesday nights, and it, he was a deacon who believed some new idea. And finally, the deacons had to meet with him and say, you either hush or leave. That's real. That gets real. And, and, and you who are leaders in the congregation, y'all need to make sure that your pastor is not always one that has to deal with stuff like that because then it becomes a pastor issue and, and congregations get squirrely sometime on, you know, when the pastor has to deal with stuff that y'all know is wrong. 
sometimes it helps if people's going to take it personal if, if the pastor comes to correct them and that may be the first of where it starts but some of you who are spiritual you need to either restore the fallen person or tell them it's time to go and kick them out of the fellowship. Now that's what the Bible says about how to deal with those false teachings but you understand he tries to deceive the faithful. So don't believe something somebody says simply because they claim to be a Christian. That's how they deceive the faithful. That's how they deceive the Christians. And as I mentioned, there are these cults and these other religious groups that they'll deliver a Bible to your door. And they'll give you a copy of their Bible, which is a perversion of your Bible. And they will, they, all those things go on. And they will try to get you to join them. How do you identify the, the Antichrist? Well, those that are trying to get you out of your congregation into another congregation because the, many of the Antichrist will preach a false gospel. And when you preach a false gospel, when you embrace a false gospel, even among Christian denominations and churches, you end up with a counterfeit Christian. They are having a counterfeit righteousness and you settle for a counterfeit salvation. And if you don't have the real thing when it comes time for you to stand before God and face your eternal residence, whatever it's going to be, wherever it's going to be, I want to tell you something. A counterfeit salvation is not going to help you on that day. John says, be careful. This is serious. These are end times. This is the last times. And understand this. Satan is not an originator. He is a counterfeiter. He always complicates the truth, puts enough of the, enough of the truth in something to make you believe it. So what's, what's that leave us? The truth, of, the truth of God's Word in our heart. We know the truth. We need to stick with the truth. And what does anti mean? Against. Maybe. What does Satan say? to Jesus. Yea, hath God said... Oh, he said that to Eve. You remember in the garden, at the very beginning, Satan said to Eve, Oh, has God said... Really? Oh, he just don't want you eating of that tree because he knows it's, it's just wonderful. He's just trying to keep that from you. Sowing doubt, sowing confusion, causing confusion. Maybe... Sometimes it's a blatant lie and you know better. Sometimes it's kind of subtle. I offer you something instead of. And in our pluralistic society, there's a lot of foolishness out there. A lot of emptiness. People clamoring to be heard. Those who believe that Jesus is just the personification of everything good in this world and do not know the truth of God's Word and do not know Jesus in a personal way. It's out there. John writes to a church in a crisis situation, a critical hour, the last hour. And the question for a lot of those folks is, is the church going to survive? Are they going to survive? Because you had all of that stuff coming in, the Antichrist working against the church, substituting the truth for a lie, and wanting the church to be anything other than what God intended it to be. And that is rampant in our country today. It's rampant in the world today. And so many people wanting the church to be something God never intended it to be. Be careful. It's a critical time. You need to know the truth. And so when we look at the Antichrist, what's the test? Perseverance. There's nothing new. Hang in there. Believe what you know. The anointing through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know what the truth is. That anointing, that knowledge. Sealed, you are sealed to the day of redemption and He knows how to give you the answers to life's questions. Third thing, belief in Jesus. Understand who Jesus is. He is the eternal living Son of God. And he's not just a prophet. He's not just a good man. He's not just a teacher. And if you don't believe that, folks, you have been lied to and you have believed the lie. Understand who Jesus is. Your eternal destiny depends upon what you think and what you believe about Jesus. 
And then what's the last thing? Oh, they come in and they try to get you to go their way. They try to deceive the faithful is what the Bible says here. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him is what verse 27 says. And you will continue to abide in him. But be careful. Be careful. Be careful. So let me ask you a question. We talk about counterfeit Christians and a false gospel and false truth. You're here today in a worship service, in a congregation, in a church. But let me ask you a question. Are you really a Christian? Or are you a counterfeit Christian? Are you really a Christian? Or are you deceiving us? The Bible gives us clearly what it means to be a real Christian. John said, this is serious times. Serious hour. You need to know the truth. Stand on the truth. Our government's gone crazy. Our communities have gone crazy. Our churches have gone crazy. There's so many cults and false teachings out there that our church people are believing that and accepting that and being distracted by the real ministry of evangelism and the real gospel of Jesus Christ. Be careful because this is a crisis hour. And what God needs is people that know what they believe, know who they believe in, know where they're going, and share the glorious gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't deceive yourself. Don't be a counterfeit Christian. And don't deceive us. Don't be a counterfeit Christian. So are you really a Christian? Or are you just deceiving yourself? Good question. Let's pray. God, help us today to understand the truth of your word. May we take it and apply it. And above all else, Lord, help us to come to a peace that passes all understanding as we know beyond any doubt who Jesus is. Not just about him, but to know that he is our own personal Lord and Savior. I pray, Lord, that you might help us, that we might be able to respond to you in truth and be able to respond to the lies of this world, the lies of Satan. Help us to know beyond any shadow of a doubt that our salvation is secure. We're on our way to heaven through faith in Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray if there be somebody here today who does not yet have that assurance, may they not leave this place until they make things right with you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our closing hymn. Amen. This altar is open. If you need to do business with God, whatever you need, you respond as the Lord leads you.
Thank you, Brother Dr. Jerry Nash, for sharing the word with us today. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Amen. Father, thank you so much for what you do for us. Lord, help us to not be deceived. Help us to have belief in Jesus. Help us to be a real Christian and not just try to deceive somebody. Lord, we thank you for the word today. And we ask you to bless us as we leave this place. As we get ready to come back tonight for a concert at 6. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. How would you like the way I remind